Long time no here, I know that, but I can officially start the special log that I wanted to make. I'm not sure how long this will take, but I can't wait and I can't believe we finally reached this. <laughs> you obviously know by the title what this is, but I'm just, you know, opening it up. It's time to officially end my journey through this incredible series and incredible world and beautiful characters and I already want to cry and I feel dread at just finishing it. I, I don't want to spend such a big part of my life for like two years. I can't imagine a day when I won't have something from Wheel of Time to read or something new to read. I don't want to imagine that but we have to finish it. So. I don't know why I just feel so sad and I don't want I don't want to read the last page maybe I, no I'm sorry I'm not being cohesive but this is just so big for me and I can't force myself to finish it so this will be a bittersweet ride I hope you enjoyed the vlog I'm not sure how long it will last but I'm probably going to have a lot of thoughts so Let's get ready for the emotional roller coaster that I'm bound to go through. I I'm like on page 121 now. <laughs> and I'm dying of laughter. Like <laughs> it's when Rand's talking with Avienda before shit hits the fan, but <sighs> I love I love this interaction. I'm not sure if it's Jordan's or Sanderson's. I think it's Sanderson's, but Oh, he's like, Avienda sniffed, enough talk. You will bed me now. I don't know why that's so funny to me. Be maybe because I'm looking for something to laugh at in this interaction. Because the whole three women thing is a little weird to me. A little strange to read. And I'm not a fan of the romance, really, in this part of the book. But I found that so funny. She like just came to his tent after spending some time with his other girlfriend. And now she's like, okay, enough talking. You will bet me now this is the last chance we will get. Another one is already pregnant. Another one you've been betting for like months. Well, let's do it, Rand. I don't know why this is so funny to me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but I also kind of teared up already. <laughs> like, already. At page 100 of a 900 page book, yeah. When I need heals Talmains, that was just beautiful, as usual. Light exploded out of her. I love Nynaeve. That should be already clear at this point, but I adore her. Let's continue reading, though. I will have to stop soon. I'm getting kind of tired. I will bed you now, Randall Thor. I know we are getting a lot of the Black Tower right now for obvious reasons, and Pevara and... Andral, they are hilarious and amazing. I love them. But, like, I never expected to like Red this much. She's pretty cool. And he is adorable. He's so cute. I... He just knocked those two out because he's so weak with the power. He's like, nope, let's just knock them out. And that was so funny. But I love the two of them and how they bonded. And they're actually very nice characters. Why do I like characters that were only introduced like very recently. This is book 14 in a very long series. I'm not supposed to be attaching to new people at this point. Like, I can't even keep track of how many characters I like. This is insane. <laughs> yeah, I stopped at page, I think, 128, chapter 3. That's enough for today, but God, I love everything about this. The next day I might not seem like it, but. <clears throat> Why am I crying? <laughs> this is not because of sadness. It's because Maureen's back. Yeah, she's back. <laughs> she just walks in and everyone's quiet after a moment. But Kill me. This was the best. <laughs> this was the best. Again? Freaking again? <laughs> 
the meeting just happened and they went to help Lan. I, this the uh, I will die. I will die. I'm not even 200 pages in and I've already cried like three times. <laughs> when they charge and his force becomes larger and the Ashman come to help and he's like, oh, 6,000 turned to 100 and Malkir leave, lives on this day. I just, I am emotional. I need a minute. <laughs> I know this whole feels like it's the same night because I usually vlog in the same position <laughs> in the same pajamas, but <sighs> all the fighting and everything's going on. I'm not sure what to comment on first. Pevera and Andral are still the best. I love them, but Lan fighting and Bulan just died. And I didn't even know him and this is so sad. And what was his name? I mean, I can't remember his name. I think it was... Yeah, Evan. When he was turned. And Nalam died as well. Like... I don't even know these characters as well as some of the others, but... Their death just freaking got to me. This is such an emotional book. I'm only like 200 pages and 700 more pages to go. And if we continue on like this, this will likely emotionally ruined me which is just terrific but it's incredible it's amazing there's a couple of sanderson -y moments that you can notice <laughs> yeah some dialogue and some things that are just like you know thank you but damn it this is good i had to comment on this because <laughs> oh i'm getting too upset by the random characters dying this is like their order of importance is like 250 probably, or maybe even more. Still very sad. It's literally been like five seconds since I last updated you, but I have to read this out so you can just cry with me. If you read it, I'm sure you already know what I'm about to read, but... You did well, my friend, he said. Your praises will be sung for generations. May you shelter in the palm of the Creator's hand, and may the last embrace of the Mother welcome you home. He turned to the others. I will not mourn. Mourning is for those who regret, and I do not regret what we do here. Bullen could not have died a better death. I do not cry for him. I cheer. This is not allowed. <laughs> this is not allowed. 200 pages in, this is not... No. No. Matt's back. 250 pages into this book, Matt is finally back. He needs to go tell his frickin' wife to actually calm the fuck down because the end of the world is here, so... Oh god, I missed him so much. We've seen all the boys now and this is... Shit is hitting the fan. I have so much more of the book left, but like... Everyone's already fighting and... I have no idea when Rand's gonna go to Shia Ghoul, but I don't know. Everything is just so dynamic. I can't believe this book is so long and yet there's literally a thousand things happening per chapter. But Let's see Matt try and talk some sense into these psychopaths. <laughs> then I think I'm gonna go to bed and stop reading for today because I'm very tired, but we need to see how this goes. I may have forgotten in detail, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, because I need the detail, but... Like, Moraine and Rand are in Lan's tent now, but... Why didn't we get a Lan and Moraine reunion? Like, he's just casually walking in, and they're talking, like, oh... The woman I've literally been spending my life with is alive. Did I miss that moment? Or did Matt tell Lan that he would get Moraine, maybe he told him before he sent, before Nynaeve sent him to the Borderlands, but did I miss a Lan and Moraine reunion? Because if that wasn't written, I am up upset. We didn't get a Moraine and Swan reunion, we didn't get a Lan and Moraine reunion. So many moments. So many good moments missed, but 
I still love the dynamic. I love them. I adore the two of them so, so much. But opportunities missed. Please tell me I'm wrong in the comments because I need... <sighs> Fucking tame. I hate that guy. I hate him. I hate him a lot. He killed Deep. One of the Ashaman who you know for like a couple of pages at best, but no. Fuck tame. <sighs> but yeah, I read some mad chapters and that was very rough. Very, oh no, very rough. Sanderson is really not good at writing Matt. I mean, he's not good at writing pretty much anything in this book, but Matt just, oh, that's rough. Completely wrong characterization. Terrible jokes. Just no. But Rand and Moraine, every time they talk, I love that a lot. And... Yeah, stop killing the Asha men, by the way. I love them, and they're always the targets, so... Stop it. <laughs> stop it, please. Like, kill some eyes to die or something. Just stop killing the Asha men. <sighs> I haven't read much, but yeah, I have to go out now, so I might continue tonight. Finally, I'm speaking from a different location. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'm reading again, and just wanted to say that it's rough. This book is definitely worse than the last one, but because there's a lot more Sanderson crap, but there's so many good moments just littered in there that I'm kind of liking it, but when there's a bad moment, I cringe. I cringe really hard, but right now I'm reading one of the good moments, so I'm sort of remembering why I like it. It's a very difficult read, actually. I didn't expect it to be like this, but... I better not have read what I just fucking read. What is going on here? <laughs> so, what? <laughs> First of all, who the fuck are the Sharan? I might not have been paying attention, but seriously, who are these people? And what is this fuckery? And also, did did Yukiri and Suwan and Brian just freaking die without... What? I'm going to be very angry. Very, very angry if this is actually how they went out. This is the least emotional scene of a death of very good characters I've ever probably read. This is like... I'm just... I don't believe this. <laughs> this is the stupidest chapter in the history of anything Sanderson has done in these books. What the fuck is this? <laughs> and now I feel like I'm screaming. I'm I'm sorry, but what the fuck? <laughs> no. Just what the f Hi, me, me again. Just This is such a stupid chapter. I, the conflict is terrible in these. Like, it's suddenly... Oh, they have thousands upon thousands of enemy troops because... Oh, I mean, Egwene's winning. We can't have her winning for too long. Here's a bunch of... Here's a race that you've never actually seen before. I mean, I just asked my dad. Yeah, there's some... They're apparently from land beyond the Isle Waste, but... Yeah, no. <laughs> Creating conflict just because you need 900 pages to the last book. No, it's... I don't like it. I don't like it. It's boring and stupid, and I'm not a fan, so... <laughs> let's keep reading, and hopefully something good actually comes along, because... 400 pages in, and... Still 500 to go! So basically, Rand... Is going to Shail Ghoul. Soon, very soon. <sighs> Moraine and Lenny are going with them because we love them and we need our icons fighting together the best male character and the best female characters exactly I support it <laughs> he sent all his girlfriends to control the battlefields and he's sending the Shan Chan to fight with Egwene which is <laughs> not the best idea maybe but I can't wait to see how that dynamic plays out so. lost a hundred and twenty I to die in this stupid fuck ass raid. What is this? <laughs> I hate this in books where it's like, oh, one army is too strong. We need to cut them off. So let's just 
put in some bullshit and they're all going to die. So it seems more dangerous for the heroes. Like I am 400 pages into a 900 page book. This was so sudden, so stupid. It wasn't even someone who I'm emotionally tied to, like, oh, this and this army attacked, so now I'm very sad that we lost so many troops. 120 Ayas to die. I have a problem with this. I have a lot of problems with this. Yes, my hair is a mess. That is not the point of this video. <laughs> but, no. I dislike this. This is probably the worst thing in this book. <laughs> It's stupid and lazy, and I am certain that it would not have happened that way originally. But, have to suffer through Sanderson, I guess. It's stupid. It's so stupid. There's a lot of stupid things in this book regarding the army and the planning and the battles and everything. But, this is probably the stupid, stupidest. Yeah, here's this army that we didn't count on. Because, of course we didn't count on it. It was mentioned like four times, probably throughout the series, but... Yeah, here they are. They killed almost all of our channelers because, yeah, we have 500 more pages and this wasn't dangerous enough, so let's go, I guess. I can't wait until that stupid thing with the Black Tower happens. I already know that. My dad also told me, like, <laughs> yeah, there's hundreds of, hundreds of male channelers, but suddenly, oop, where did they go? They're gone. They're not there anymore. Tame's gonna have a lot of them, but... Yeah, anyway, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Andral is the best. I love him. Here are your men, I said I respect them. That moment. If you've read it, you know, so. Oh my god. <laughs> He's the best. I love, I love the Ashraman. I can't help myself. I adore them so much. Pushing it, Sanderson. I've had enough. I've had enough of the Sharn people or whatever. I have no time to care for them at this point. Their traditions, whoever the fuck they are, the only point is that they have demon dread with them, but we could have done without the theatrics. So even if it was planned for them to show up, I'm not sure if it would have been done this way because... No, no, it's so tacky and just pathetic, the way they showed up and suddenly, oh, they have interesting traditions, don't care, couldn't care less, we are on page 406, I could not care less of book 14. So yeah, I hope this stops soon, and I, you know, that I'm looking at it, parents next, so maybe we will finally get some sense put into this book, so. Perrin is about to lead the wolves on the last hunt and that's just I want to cry every time he talks to the wolves in the dream and if they make any reference to Hopper I am likely to cry just keep that in mind but yeah finally re finally reached a good part this is very good the chapter quick fragments that shit was incredible. <laughs> I literally almost cried like a good couple of times. Anytime something happens with Perrin and the wolves, I immediately tear up, but it was so good how he was protecting Rand from the dream world and just fighting Slayer, who I can't wait to see killed. That piece of I don't even know what to say about him, but it was beautiful, and how the wolves helped him, and how they didn't mourn their dead because they'd come to fight, and how Perrin talked to Nynaeve through the dream world, and she heard him, and that was freaking beautiful. Man. <laughs> Every time you read one of those scenes, you forget why all the other stuff has been crap, but... I still wish the crap wasn't there. <laughs> but these scenes, these scenes are basically why I'm so happy that I'm reading this. And I'm pleased that there's still a decent number of them amongst the Sanderson triple. So, I can see the next chapter is Gavin. So yeah, I guess we're done with the good stuff for now. <laughs> I will fight.
to one if she tries to take men away from us. Just no. Fucking no. This woman is insane. I'm laughing because it's a hilarious interaction. But no, you're not taking men away from the others. No. <laughs> and you can go fuck yourself I'm going to walk into that book and I will strangle you with my own two hands I will be the assassin that kills you no you're not taking men you already got Matt and turned him into an idiot you're not getting men I just realized that Fail has been carrying the bloody horn of Valier for like I don't know how many pages but a lot I don't remember the last time we saw her, like, and where's Oliver? The last time he was mentioned was at the end of Towers of Midnight when he was gambling with Talmain. So, like, where is he? He's supposed to blow the horn. So, where are those two? I mean, it's kind of convenient that we don't see them until the moment that we need them, but <laughs> you should think that a battle of the dead would come in handy very quickly. Oh, what's wrong with my hair? But... Just like Lord of the Rings, it always comes in <laughs> at the end. But I can't get over how Matt was just completely butchered. Sanderson can't even write a decent line when he's writing Matt. That's just depressing. I mean, I realized I was reading Matt now and I realized how much I hated him. I mean, Perrin is incredible. Rand... It hasn't been the best in this book, but when there are Jordan scenes, you love Rand. You love Perrin so much. But Matt, just a cringe face every time he appears on the page, which sucks because Matt is actually a great character and I loved his storyline. And he was great at the end of Towers of Midnight when he goes to rescue Moraine because that was Jordan's writing, probably, I think. But... Ooh, I just don't want to read about <laughs> Sanderson's Matt. That's just, no. I don't want to dislike Matt in the last book because I generally love Matt, but right now, he is not it. Perrin and Rand, I hope you guys can carry me through to the end, and I hope that Matt will have some Jordan written scenes until this wraps up because I don't like hating him because I, I know objectively that I love him, but right now I just can't stand him. So, I think I'm going to read a little bit more. I just crossed page 500. I might get to chapter 30, which is another 20-ish pages. So, I think that'll be it for tonight because I'm a little tired. But we're making good progress. Maybe this is just me not remembering some stuff, but... Wasn't the red hand supposed to be with Matt at some point during this book I've crossed the 500 page mark and like he still hasn't reunited with Talmains or with any of his troops I think some of them are here with him but I mean they're not mentioned at all so he's just with the Sean Chan mostly now but I find it stupid <laughs> like there's this is a very very long book like, it's over 900 pages, and this is the hardcover, so the paperback has, like, over a thousand. It's a very long book, and there's so many reunions that we don't get for a long time. Like, no Matt and the Red Hand. Perrin isn't with his troops most of the time. I mean, I get it, but I'm talking about the entire book. And what else? I'm forgetting no Fail just disappeared. There's not much Nynaeve or Moraine, even though they're the best female characters by far. I mean, what else? I don't know. I'm very tired. I can't think right now. But this book is like... We didn't get the Swan and Moraine a reunion, which is a waste considering the Swan will die. But I don't... I, I really dislike this. <laughs> I dislike it a lot. And yeah, I keep mentioning things that haven't happened yet because, I mean, my dad's been reading this for, like, almost ten years. This book came out eight years ago. He read it then, and before I was interested in actually reading the series, he told me a lot of stuff. So, I know spoilers. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. So, yeah, that's why I know <laughs> who dies, basically. But... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just rambling at this point. I'm tired. I'm sorry. 
I'm on a matte chapter again, and dear god, I can't. What is- no. What is this bullshit? The more he likes Tuon, the less I like him. They're just basically bullying men, and I hate this. I hate this a lot. <laughs> Fuck Tuon. If I could get into the book and just kill her on the spot, I would. But now Matt is liking her and almost defending her and basically submitting to her. Let's be honest, he's not changing any minds around here. And they're bullying men. What? No. What is this bullshit? I don't want to hate Matt. How did she get me to hate Matt? Make it stop. I think the fuck not. Matt literally just said, if only men would learn a little respect. A little respect. We don't like Matt anymore. No. Absolutely not. All of the Shan Chan should just be rounded and executed and he is, says that Min is the one who needs to learn this. Mm, boy, am I angry at Sanderson. And if this is Jordan, which we can't know what is his and what is not, but most of the writing still reeks of Sanderson. What the fuck? Honestly, fuck Matt. I never thought I'd say that. Fuck him. Just no. Absolutely not. Perrin and Rand, which were definitely the ones we stand right now because Matt can go fuck himself with his stupid fuck ass wife. No. This is actually annoying. I mean, I understand. I understand we can't get a lot of Rand because, I mean, we need only get snippets of him, but it's annoying. It's very annoying. I'm 600 pages in and I haven't gotten much Rand. Really, not a lot. He's not doing much. But, yeah, he's talking about the Dark One now and it's back to Perrin. But, the lack of Moraine and Nynaeve is just ridiculous. I mean, they came with Rand and they're not really important anymore, I guess. I mean, maybe they will be later, but... Considering how little we get of Rand, it's ridiculous how li little we get of the two of them. And that's stupid because they're literally the best characters aside from Rand. So, basically this book is just a whole lot of characters that you hate or dislike or are made to hate. And the ones that you like are very much sidelined. You get very little of them. And Perrin is the only one who's basically getting content. I don't know what to say about this book, man. I don't know. This might actually be worse than book 12. I can't believe I'm saying this. Stop hurting the Ashaman. <laughs> Seriously, stop hurting them. Flynn just had his arm, like, basically burned off. And no, stop hurting the Ashaman. Hurt the fucking women. Let someone, let, please let someone hurt Tuan. I would pay for that to happen. Avienda's not having a good time at Child Ghoul, so... Yikes. Also, Bella's back, which is great. We haven't seen her in a while. But whoever is making these maps for the books, wow, that looks pretty. Like the detailing of the birds and the symbol, and I love it. It's beautiful. Also, finally a Nynaeve chapter. Thank God. I'm sorry, but this little snippet of Nynaeve that we get is the best thing I've read so far. <laughs> I freaking love her. <laughs> I'm gonna just read out some some parts because this is the best. She's like, what if she took a rock? What if Morandin took a rock to his head? It will be better than waiting. I am not spending the last battle clinging to a rock, she thought. Not the same one the whole time at the very least. <laughs> I love Nynaeve. I would die for her. I can't believe this is all we get of her in this book, but I love her. <laughs> Tired. The next chapter, the last battle, is literally 200 pages, so yeah, I, yeah, no. <laughs> I've had enough for tonight, tomorrow I will sit the fuck down, I will finish that chapter, and then I'm pretty much almost done. Then I have less than 100 pages left to wrap everything up, so hopefully we'll be finishing this tomorrow. Good night for now. Well, damn it. Yeah, we're crying again. What do you think I'm crying? You can probably assume. 
I mean, we knew I would cry at this point, even though, even though I knew it would freaking happen. This just hurt. <laughs> Damn it! Like Suwon just dying like that, just getting blown up. I guess that's cool. <laughs> It's late, I'm not supposed to be talking right now. <sighs> I'm not okay. This wasn't cool to kill her off so suddenly. I mean, I get it. I get it, but she was one of my favorites. And you know that Brian has to go with her, so. Now I'm just freaking crying in a video. This sucks. <laughs> well. We'll see if I'll cry when Egwene dies. Because I didn't like her as a character. But I think her death scene is supposed to be very emotional. And if this gets me. <laughs> if just a couple. Then God knows what will happen when I get a whole ass seed. <sighs> Calm the fuck down. <sighs> yeah, this is not cool. <laughs> this is so not cool. Mm. So anyway. Now Brian's gonna die. <laughs> And Maureen will never see her friend again. It was a reunion we didn't even get. Yeah, I'm gonna go calm the fuck down and then maybe read some more. But this was a little bit unexpected. Calm down. That's good. That's very good. But, uh, Demon Dread just mentioned Magedion. And here I am wondering, like, where the hell is that bitch? <laughs> like, she's. It's the last battle, and she's nowhere to be found. I'm 700 pages in, and Magedion hasn't been mentioned once before this. She's, like, just chilling somewhere, probably. I mean, mood. Definitely mood. And I, I can relate. But. Where the hell is she? <laughs> God knows, but I think this oh I think the stupid sword fight is supposed to come now soon and that's gonna be an interesting to read. Tears will be shed at the loss of Gavin, but whoo, when Egwene loses him that was rough. <laughs> I don't even like Gavin and Egwene. I don't care that they're gonna die, but oof, that was rough. When she goes berserk. I can't wait to see what she does next. I'm actually really interested now. I was scared I wasn't gonna read much, but let's go. <laughs> Bloody again. Damn it. <laughs> We're in the lane. Gets to Brian and just. Mm, she's sad about it and. <sighs> they commented on Suan and how she was strong and fuck me. <laughs> but honestly, I don't like it. <laughs> like, none of the Sean Chen are dying too, and it's still proudly standing. There's suddenly, like, a billion of the bad, bad forces. I really don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I need to calm, calm down, seriously, for the love of God. But, like, Brian and Siwon were some of the best. They were some of the best. 
And the fact that they're dead. <laughs> well, two one is just sauntering around. <sighs> and all her freaking people. And, I mean, who are we kidding? The white cloaks, too. <sighs> this isn't fair. This isn't fair. And I'm, I'm sure... That Jordan left instructions about who dies, but I'm not sure that the execution was his because it's just shock factor ish. I mean, mostly main character deaths haven't happened like this before, they're never like, Oh, they're dead, let's move on. or. Yeah, they carried his body away, so let's just go, I guess. I don't know. I don't like the execution. I think it's Sanderson, so I'm a little bit salty right now. Quite literally, because I'm crying. But, I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, hell, when Hopper died last in the last book... You had more time mourning him than you have Suan and Brian, so... Yeah, before I... Before this turns into a sob fest, I'm gonna cut myself off, but... Yeah, I don't like it. I think it's actually kind of cute how Galad is claiming Rand as his brother. I mean... They don't even know each other, but I think that's so cool. I mean, they do know each other, but you get the point. <laughs> I still think that's so cool. Randall Thor, his brother. I didn't know if he should be proud or ashamed. He should be proud. Let's not stop. I mean, yeah, fine, you're a white cloak. I do get it. I'm not sure Rand would be too thrilled to know either. But considering that Rand has no real family, I think this is pretty cool. That Rand has a brother who's not <sighs> a total dickwad. But I think it's actually very cool. So, yeah, I like that scene. Say what you will about Egwene, and I will say a lot because I dislike Egwene, but damn. <laughs> For someone who just lost a warder, a damn. She literally stands up and she's like, yes, yeah, screw this. I will take all my anger and I will direct it at those motherfucking men and women, truth be told. And then she just takes Leo and with her, she takes on another bond and she's like, Let's go kill some evil people. <laughs> wow. The power. The power. This is beyond stupid. I just feel like I'm reading comic books at this point. But this <laughs> is how, how Andrew just walked out to Dame and he was like, Yeah, I saw myself. And Dame just freaking talked to him in the middle of a battlefield and he made him look like himself. That sounds like a freaking joke. <laughs> It was so stupidly funny, and then he actually got the seals off of it. This is the stupidest storyline. I mean, it's hard to say the stupidest because the sword fighting is still here, but this is either hilarious or heartbreaking. This book is freaking a trip, I gotta say that. I just now realized that poor Leowin, Egan, and whatever to call her, she's gonna be in a lot of pain when Egwene dies. She's probably gonna die too, and I hate that. <laughs> No one deserves to die just because they're tied to fucking Gwen. I mean, she's gonna kill Tame now, which props to her for that alone, but why does poor Leowin have to die? She has her good husband Bale, and that's not fair. You shouldn't lose a wife just because she tied herself to a Gwen. That's not fair. But Let's see if Gwen beat Tame, then I'm probably going to go to freaking sleep because I have no idea what the time is anyway. I think it's like, yeah, 3 a.m. Damn it. <laughs> well, I'm... <clears throat> well, I'm glad that you brought Bella back long enough to kill her. would have been actually fine with her not being back in this book if she didn't if I, I would have been fine 
not seen her again. But you had to bring her back to kill her, didn't you? So you want me to suffer even on account of the horses? This isn't fair. I hate this. <sighs> Dear Lord, I'm having <laughs> Lady of the Lake flashbacks. The book fucking sucks, but all it gets out of you is crying because it keeps killing characters you like. I don't like comparing anything to Lady of the Lake. That fucking sucked. I fucking hate it here. I don't want to read this book ever again. <sighs> Bashir is dead now, I guess. The captains are fucking gone. <sighs> Dang it. And all the others said Rancy is dying. So basically the only emotional response this book is getting out of me is fucking crying. This is the exact same way that I felt with The Witcher because the plot was stupid and I was bored and I didn't like a lot of things but I liked the characters even if they weren't the people that I loved. They still had the names of people that I loved so when you kill them you do get an emotional response out of me but I hate it. I hate it. I resent this book a lot. I don't want to read it again. And I hate that because this could have been a good ending. I mean, there is still the ending, which I heard is great. The one that Jordan wrote the last chapter, but I hate everything else. Honest to God, I hate it. I've had enough of this. 800 freaking pages of being bored and crying. I hate it. I want to bloody cry. I'm fucking pissed off. I've had enough of this. I've had fucking enough of this. I want to stop reading this book. I hate it. I, I hate it. Mm. I'm very angry. I'm very angry. No. I'm very, very, very angry. I don't want to feel like I'm reading Lady of the Lake. This is exactly how I'm feeling. I feel like I turned the page and another freaking main character just dies. Unceremoniously, no mourning. Just fuck them. They're dead. Brigitte is gone. Screw her, I guess. Yeah, this fucking sucks. And I want to leave. I remember what I last said. I'm very tired, but holy crap. Holy crap, how we're going right out. Top notch, gotta say. Out of all the crap in this book, that was the best death scene. Best. I am. Yeah best death scene <laughs> it was the best just incredible wow <laughs> yeah but now Lan's gonna go and have a fun sword fight with the demon dread who can't stop screaming <laughs> I mean it, it's comic booky again like yeah let's sword fight this incredibly powerful Chandler to death because sure but I'm gonna end this chapter soon thank fucking god been reading for hours. <laughs> yeah, it's already. It's gonna be four and a half an hour, so I'm gonna finish this 200 page chapter, then get up in the morning and finish it so we can finally put this fucking book back on the fucking shelf. <laughs> morning now, not that you would know because I look the exact same, but yeah, the Tom part of the chapter is so pretty. I mean, it, it reeks of Sanderson, but it's so cool how he's like smoking his pipe and composing. Then Katsuan walks by and he's just, whoop, stab her. And he's like, yeah, no, not Katsuan. <laughs> oh, I fucking love Tom. He's the best. Layer's fucking dead. Oh, thank fucking God. She stayed alive way too long. Thank God. I've been laughing for a solid minute at how Grendel ended up. <laughs> Guess she's gonna worship Avienda now, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, please, glorious one, tell me what you wish of me, let me serve you. <laughs> how Avienda just didn't burst out laughing is beyond me. 
I mean, it's hilarious. <laughs> McGandy is like, oh thank god, I didn't do shit this entire time and now I'm the only one left alive and fuck. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm supposed to be Dominic? <laughs> Honestly, poor McGandy and I don't wish that on anyone. <sighs> yeah, this is freaking hilarious. I'm literally in the car. This is the funniest end clip ever, probably. <laughs> because it looked terrible. That's besides the point. But I didn't even wrap up my vlog. <laughs> so, yeah, I finished The Memory of Light, I think, like, two days ago. Most of it was crap, but the epilogue, the epilogue was excellent. That was Jordan, and that was incredible. The characters suddenly just came back to what they were, and that was incredible. But all in all, I had a lot of trouble reading the book, because, like, the book I wanted to give, like, two stars, but then all the good parts were, like, five stars. So I gave it a five on Goodreads, though, because I think the whole series deserves a five, but... I am not likely to read the next, I mean, the next, there is no next book. I'm not li likely to read the last one again, <laughs> because that was just suffering for 900 pages, but, yeah, that's basically it. That was the update. I hope you enjoyed the Memory of Light vlog. I hope you enjoyed all the clips where I'm freaking crying all the time, because that's usually how I am when I'm reading something I love. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the crying. I hope you enjoyed some of the spoilery bits, because if you've read it, you must have re-experienced <laughs> that period through me so I hope you liked it obviously if you don't like spoilers you haven't even watched this video so those of you that did I hope you enjoyed and I'm happy we finally wrapped up this two year nearly long journey I'm done with this series and take care I will see you in my next one Thank you.